Hello world, welcome to another edition of Pendragon Poetry. This time I'm going to be reading from the Burnley ad. It's my own book, you can buy it online now, just like Google Damien Bullen Burnley ad. And it involves, there's a few poems in it, and a dissertation on the battlefield of Brunanburg. But in the centre, it's core of the book, is my uh, history of Burnley Football Club in verse, from its inception to its establishment as a Premier League club. You know, I bleed Clement Blue, I was born on stoops, moved down Hill Phil, as McGonny said, to Aki Road, and now I'm here fanning about my Scotland. As the years you do. So without further ado, let's get on with my poem. Since the days of wooden rattles, Burnley's loved its footy back. I'm not gonna read all of it by the way, I'm just gonna read a bit from the beginning and a bit about the 60s. The rest of it you can buy. <laughs> Since the days of wooden rattles, Burnley's loved its footy battles and its workplace tittle tattles, betting wages on the score. Underneath those ever fat hills, kissing clouds upon the moor, is the club we all adore. Well, my name is Damien Bullen, and my loyalties are fullen, and I've sang for Jimmy Mullen from the long side at Turf Moor, where the shine is shite and sullen, always claret to the core, only now and evermore. Burnley born and born a poet, I and mate are bloody know it so I thought that I would show it because what's a poet for but to sing about his passion so with pride I join the row of no nay never no more you might think this out of order but I was an Aki Roder and my mum could not afford a ticket for me down Surf Moor so I snuck in with the players about an hour or so before they'd unlocked the turnstiles door where I read Roy of the Rovers Tano is practicing voiceovers kissing all my lucky clovers hid behind the toilet door then moved up to the Bob Lord when the first long siders roar, skinning on the ground with awe. I was well and truly smitten by the Burnley bug was bitten like a freshly mewing kitten flicking marbles with a paw. From the seat where I was sitting, I could hear the long side roar through no nay never no more. In the land of pit and spindle, west of Leeds and south of Kendall, neath the lazy slopes of Pendle in the hazy days of yore, Charlie McIntyre floats a lovely pass across the floor. Albert Higginson must score. Sends a shot across the cobbles. Hits a curl, curb, ball ups and bobbles. Goldie flounders as it wobbles in off Mrs. Wade's front door. All the happy lads and lasses smiling as the miners score. Sang, no nay never no more. Though Burnley was rug good rugby ground, a better game it seemed was found to praise the local glory sound. As proud young sportsmen score. How swiftly Burnley's rugby club switched course to full explore. Football's flowering rapport. With Olympia and Rangers were the Trinity, the Ramblers, Hapton Sprinkle and the Wanderers, Haggate and Excelsior. But then the true eponymous that played upon Turf Moor, going harder to ignore. Just a stone's throw from the centre and an apron to enter. or oh, the missus is back. Just a stone's throw from the centre and the apron to enter the fine grandstand where a venter can anxieties outpour. Legs feeling, every tackle's crunch, hearts missing beats and more when the lads were set to score. <laughs> Let's just see what the fuss is. If they're okay? Pipsy. Pipsy or farm dog. <laughs> Just a stone's throw from the centre and the apron to enter the fine grandstand where a venter can anxieties outpour. Legs feeling, every tackle's crunch, hearts missing beats and more when the lads are set to score. When McGregor of the Villa brought a dozen clubs together, Mr Armistead of Brunshire helped to form the football corps, whom on the train from Manchester as brown ale bottles pour sang, no nay never no more. I lot mixed it up with Accrington, those bastard Rovers, sorry, bastard Rovers, Everton, Wolves, Bolton and the Albion with games and goals galore. When every few new seasons league men had a couple more, goalposts sprung from shore to shore. The board now searches to unearth a manager of local birth with pedigree of proven worth, man steeped in footy law, approaches Stanley's John Howarth, who answers with firm jaw, I'm the man to run surf more. So Howarth brought in Bert Freeman, his full-backs Halley Boyle Watson with goal kept by Jerry Dawson from the star stands Posh Deco. Fort watched the famous cup run through the polished turnstiles pour to electrical turf more. 
In the semi-final frantic, striding like a wild gigantic, our boy unleashed a lightning kick, net shaking to the score. And when the whistle... Hold that with you. We'll do that again. In the semi-finals, frantic, striding like a wild gigantic, our boil unleashed a lightning kick, neck shaking to the score. And when the whistle went, the crowd lifted him from the floor, sang no near, never no more. Old oh, Burnley was a phantom town for everyone. I set off down to see the palace and the crown and the parliamentary tour. And as the match kicked off, the ground was rafter packed and more for the finals' fiery war. Dowsing Scousers with a sprinkler, Albert Freeman shot a twinkler. Couldn't take a master thinker then to see the final score. The Reds lay siege until the jingling whistle starts the soar of no near never no more. Our proudest captain Tommy Boyle splashed head to toe in dust and soil. Went up to meet the utmost royal, his trophy set in store. Then hoisted high the handles, greatest glory to the fore. Only now and never more. By the time the town had got home, They'd been up all night and then some, but still made a famous welcome from the martyr to Turf Moor. As little Bob Lord saw the cup, his heart was brimming o'er to love Burnley then, he swore. So we're going to fast forward it now to Bob Lord taking over Burnley Football Club. So that was like 1914, he watched Burnley win the cup, well, in the town centre, bring the cup home. And then he actually bought the club, so that's where we're going to join it. So Bob Lord, a lower house butcher, Bought the club and brought together Robson, Adamson and Miller formed a model football core. Convinced McElroy and Pilkington, McDonald and Blacklaw, football's soul lay with Turf Moor. From Plush's seat up in the stand, Lord overrode with iron hand, built Gawthorpe for to train his band, set youth systems in store. And on the long side built a roof to amplify the roar of no near never no more. This pugnacious autocratic, unsalacious automatic, and insatiable fanatic like a Caesar on the shore had envisioned an emphatic empire lord of all he saw when his whims to him were law. The 50s were a great decade where fluid football was displayed. Alas, each time the charge did fade while threatening to do more. But then the team clicked into place as all around Surf Moor you could sense when we would score. My granddad went on all these games, remembers all them sacred names which flicker in his dreams like flames, the best he'd ever saw. When Jimmy Mack, he always claims, was Messi's best and more, our miracle meteor. Ah, he's our top man, is Jimmy Mack, the maestro of the fast attack, a pass came to him from half back, feet baffling on the floor. Defenders flattening on their back broke every football law, name revered forevermore. From Old Trafford to St Andrews, your White Hart Lane, your Molly News and Ewood, whose team won or use, from Palace to Shop Floor, men sensed that destiny was fusing with the tribal roar of no near never no more. As Barlick, Hapton, Aki Road descends upon a packed main road, just one last win would now accord the championship's oar. So City raised their game, helped by that massive manky roar, won a piece, it seemed we draw. But cheering skies filled with cloth cap, Meredith's white to thunderclap. We Burnley's put back on the map as the ref blew final score. When following the trophy to its new home at Turf Moor, rang no near never no more. Thank you very much. So yeah, um, don't forget to subscribe, donate and everything, and uh, buy the book like I said. Bye.